Greetings, friends. Dr. Espen here. Welcome to Dr. ETV. Today, I'm joined by a good friend of mine, a, uh, a serial entrepreneur, incredible woman who has achieved so many incredible things. I want to say welcome to Megan Jarvis. How are you, sister? So well. Thanks, thanks, Espen. And I couldn't be more grateful. It's so much fun. And um, it's so exciting when you get to do an interview with somebody that you're also very good friends with. You have chats with all the time. Um, I mean, the amount that you've actually uh, helped me with my life and my entrepreneurial journey and everything that you've taught me just in our friendship, um, I'm sure will come out today. So I'm so excited to be chatting with you and I'm so grateful for what you're doing with Dr. ETV and, and everything else with regards to the quantum advance. So thank you. Uh Oh, that's a pleasure, sister. This is going to be a lot of fun. The topic for today is uh, get moving again. And I want to talk to those out there who have got stagnant in any part of life, be it physical health, mental, emotional, financial, business. It can be so many different things, right? And so I want to introduce you, give you a bit more context uh, in regards to Megan Jarvis. So she's a former world-class BMX bicycle racer. Okay, that takes a lot of grit to be able to do that. Uh, she came to Australia to originally play uh, professional basketball and stayed as a lead lecturer for the Australian Institute of Fitness. Uh, Megan's passion for fitness and entrepreneurialism led to her founding WellCorp Health and Wellness and a company called Buzzville, which is really cool. We'll talk about that soon, um, a, which is a global health and fitness app. Okay, connecting gyms all around the world. So exciting. Uh, most recently appeared as an actor and stunt woman on the blockbuster Elvis, um, uh, the Portable Door, Aquaman, and of course, you and I had the privilege to rock out um, Australian Ninja Warrior together as ninjas in in a couple of seasons there as well. So you've done a lot of incredible things. Um, I want to just talk to you quickly about, you know, we talk about getting started again or getting moving again. Uh, what is it that would be your advice to people out there now with what's happening in the world as to how do we get moving again? Uh, I mean, the the number one thing that we're going through right now, and I like to use statistics to really put the the weight and the preface on how important this conversation is today, right now. It's a perfect time to have it. Um, that uh, a study that's just come out, 25% of Australians find it difficult to get moving again from where they were two years ago. So that's that 25% of um, like myself as a gym owner, fitness professionals, anybody in the health and fitness industry used to be training. They're just going, no, I can't get moving again. And then on top of that, of course, we know we've got that other 70% of the population that are still in limbo. They, um, the, the other stat is 70% of people don't even know how much movement that they should be doing. So mm -hmm. how do we really get uh, moving again, but how do we get those people that haven't been moving at all um, back motivated because this has been a huge awakening over the last two years of how important our health and wellness is. Um, and my number one thing is uh, looking at why you haven't and uh, what we get over thousands of clients is that uh, I don't have time and what, mm. uh, what I've tried before hasn't worked for me in the past. And so when it comes to not having time, that's our, our number one excuse. It comes back to things that you guys talk on this show. So I really want all of the coaches out there to go back and everyone listening, just to go back to your why. Why do you really want to start moving again? Put the emphasis on the deeper meaning, whether it's to, um, you know, get naked in front of your partner and feel comfortable. You know, you have to go a little bit deeper than just losing weight. Find mm -hmm. that motivation and then use tools that really switch your brain from one side of the keep me safe zone to the other going, okay, I can take that first step again. I can go for the walk. I can um, actually park my car further away, just do some incidental exercise and then start moving again into maybe, uh, you know, fitness outside, outdoor activity. And the gym is really the last thing that we look at right now. So that's where we're, we're really looking at that 25%, getting them moving again and hitting on mm. those other 70% of people that haven't been moving and, and giving them motivation to do so. Look at their objections and then and play on that. So it's been an exciting uh, first three months in the health and fitness industry because we've been able to start tackling these in a different way than we've ever have before. It's really coming down to that mindset, the subconscious and uh, rewiring with our neuroplasticity. So it's been really, really fun. 
Oh, that's so cool. And you know what's it's, in, it's interesting when you look at it because the the old objection that I don't have enough time. You know, my old mentor used to say, if you don't have time to meditate twenty minutes every morning, just do three hours instead. <laughs> Which is a, such a good example because if you're too busy to take care of yourself, well then eventually you're going to run into, you know, some major challenges. So I think this this one thing is really important. I don't have enough time. For those of you listening, if you if you say that to yourself, um, there's two things that I saw happening during COVID. One, when we're in lockdown, one of two things will take place. One, you either just eat unhealthy, eat crap, drink alcohol, and just literally spiral downwards. Or two, you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take charge. I'm going to actually take care of my life, eat clean, start moving. And even if I can't leave my apartment, I'm still going to do some conscious movement, some breath, some yoga, some fitness, whatever. It's really interesting when you observe it because the excuse then on, of I don't have enough time, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't last. It, it does, it's not valid when someone actually is at home with all that time. So you kind of have these two different kinds of people, one that doesn't move and one that does move. And this is why it's so important to have conversations like this, because for those of you listening, I'm sure that many would like to either one, start moving or two, take your movement and your fitness to the next level. Um, so if we can observe this and, and look at these objections and actually start moving again, if we can get the 25% to 30% or maybe even up to 40 or 50%, what's the next step after that? Because you've seen thousands and thousands of clients and you've been in this field for a long time. Uh, what would you say would be the second thing to do once we've actually started moving and we've identified the why, which I love yeah. what you spoke to, the emotional reason why. What do we do after that? So, um, and thank you for bringing up time again, because time is the, is the toughest. And I'll, I'll go back to some easy ways to just tackle time that we've been using lately when it comes to getting people moving again. Um, but the next step, and I'm really calling this early and now, and I, uh, being a wellness coach myself, um, which is coming from a kinesiology background, then getting into exercise therapy, exercise sports science, and um, massage therapy, uh, then looking at NLP and some deeper aspects, all the different verticals, is that we no longer just have, okay, we're going to start moving again. It's it's a, a full holistic approach now. In 2022, it's coming to the surface that you're not really just a PT. You've got to have these other elements of wellness because people are awakening to going, oh, maybe I really do need to look at the mindfulness component of meditation, breath work, and sound healing. Nutrition's 80% of losing weight. So maybe I should look at what I'm eating, what my portion size is, uh, just looking at the real basics of what I'm putting in my body. And those are really, the. it's a combination of all three. It's the triad of, okay, I've, I've taken that first step, but now how do I add in the things that make this a full uh, mind, body, spirit approach to a lifestyle that I'm going to keep going in. And that's to start diving into some of those other areas. And we say try everything because a lot of people that say, oh, well, I, it's just not for me, Meg. You know, I don't, I don't like um, co one conscious breath a day. I, I just, that's not my thing. Well, have you tried um, One Giant Mind, the meditation app, or have you tried sound healing when you go to sleep? You just need to give everything a go because you really don't know which will work and which mm. will help you on that journey. So I think as um, as we start getting moving again, it's important to bring in this all encompassing approach and fitness professionals out there. We need to be start start calling ourselves wellness coaches because it's going to become mm. a, a new trend, a, a new way of thinking for our clients as well. I totally agree. And I heard an expression once um, then it was pretty much like if the, the doctors of today don't start practicing and studying and teaching nutrition, they will pretty much not be the doctors of the future because the doctors of the future will be those who educate the patient or the client towards the health of the, the natural part of the human frame, which are those fundamentals that you're talking about. Uh, honestly, if I can give the, the listeners and viewers a, a little hint of advice, like I have always had personal trainers and coaches in my life. Um, an example, um, let's say that Megan, you said to me, Espen, I'm going to meet you at 6am at the gym and we're going to do some just basic functional movement or we're going to do yoga or whatever, right? Um, and if you compare that scenario to me saying, I'm going to go to the gym myself tomorrow 6am, but there's no one there waiting for me. What do you think the likelihood would be um, that I would show up if you weren't there? 
Okay, well, that's relevant to and different for every person, but I'm going to dare to say that the likelihood of the person, myself or whoever showing up, if no one's there waiting for you, is significantly lower. Okay, so why is that? Well, the bed's comfortable. Maybe I went to bed late. Maybe something happened. Maybe I just want to sleep in. Or maybe I haven't exercised this number one muscle, which is self-discipline. So what happens? Then I end up lying to myself. I sleep in. I feel bad. My guilt makes me sicker. And, you know, the snowball effect. So I just hack this really simply by having personal trainers, uh, even some of my employees in my life that are all there all the time to keep me on point. Because I know that if I place that accountability partner in my life, I'm going to get it done. And then I'm going to have an incredible day, productive day, and full of energy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so just for those who are listening, my question is, what kind of accountability partner, like a wellness coach, um, could you and should you have in your life right now to make sure that you actually prioritize the number one asset that you've got, which is your health? Uh, Megan, I want, I want to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 want, I want to ask you. Yeah, that, jump in, jump in. That that's one of our our, our top five. So it ha you have to have accountability. And I mean, the the statistics is that you're thirty five percent more likely. That's come out recently, but I think it's more like eighty percent. Like yeah. like you and I, that if you're if you have someone waiting, you're going to go. Um, but as wellness coaches as well, it's it's about looking at the accountability from family and friends, looking at the accountability, it doesn't even have myself. I have, I have a coach in fitness too, and we both trained at the most elite level. And I think having that ability to have someone look at your technique and, you know, help coach you to get better is huge. But even the aspect of having a best friend, you know, we just break mm -hmm. it down that simply. You might not be able to get a coach, afford a coach right now, but who in your life can you think of that would be willing to go on this journey with you and start uh, assisting you and keeping you accountable. And that's, yeah, been a huge one. So that's the key, key way to get people moving again. I love it. Well, let's write this down, everyone watching. Okay, who's the person? If you want to improve your health and well-being, feel free to pause this video. If you're watching live, just literally make up your mind and make that decision right now. Who's the person? Who are those people? Make a list of five, qualify them, um, call them up and say, hey, I'm going on the fit this fitness journey. Would you like to join? And it's also important to know that they will be keeping you accountable as much as you'll be keeping them accountable because that's going to go both ways. And I think this is such an important conversation on the topic of getting moving again. Um, what's your next uh, thing in life? What are you working on now? You know, you're passionate about so many cool things. What's the what's the drive in your life right now? What's happening? Um, at the moment, uh, expansion in the, the gym uh, area. So really putting some uh, a, a stronghold on some different states. We're going from uh, just opening a gym in New South Wales to Victoria uh, and the roadmap is Southern Australia and then WA over the next nine months. So um, it doesn't seem like much, but I'm there actually inducting everybody at the gym so it's you know from the base level of construction fit out the whole thing um so we're going to yes. be moving really quickly in that that aspect which which is great because we know it's so needed and we've had a lot of uh smaller players go under during COVID in the fitness industry and we're going to see a big boom people are going to start moving again and I think that's, uh, you know, my why my focus is there is because it's an exciting time. Everybody's going to be getting back to the gym. Um, and entrepreneurial wise, that's been a dream of mine, as I've been saying to you for the past year and a bit um, to really get this going. So my, I'm very excited for what I've visualized is, is, is coming true. I was saying to Laura backstage, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. This is so cool. You're expanding into health and wellness during these times when it's most needed. I absolutely love it. On the topic of getting moving and entrepreneurialism, I want to talk about this because you, like me, are self-made. We started with nothing. We've worked our way up from scratch. And here you are traveling around the country, opening up business after business and several one at once. If you were to talk to those um, startup entrepreneurs out there that either one, want to start their own business or two, have their own business and want to scale, um, what would be some advice that you would share in terms of getting movement as a, getting, getting moving as an entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. So number one, um, for myself, it's also part of my body type and my phenotype, but is connect, 
connect with people that are in your industry or that you're emulating or looking up to and want to be and ensure that you're reaching out. Um, I just became a ambassador for WIFA, the Women in Fitness Association. It's the largest women in fitness association globally with over 1500 members of female fitness entrepreneurs that we get to connect with people in Egypt and in India, hear what they're doing over there. And, you know, how uh, Red Bull was born in Thailand. You really do need to see what's going on globally, no matter what industry you're in. So the more that you can connect online and the more that you can, it's readily available. Everybody's um, actually coming out of, I'd say, a, a growing or an internal stage. And we're all going, how do we reach out? How do we start traveling again? And proximity is power. We know that connect with the people around you. And really um, that's the number one to entrepreneurs. And then uh, I'm huge on this. I've just read uh, Grant Cardone's 10 X your goals. And you need to actually look at what you were doing the past two years and 10 X the actions that you were taking get out there, take mass action. It does take mass action. I mean, we can think about it for a long time and miss the boat. Right now, you know, the amount of millionaires that were billionaires created during a, a crisis like this, it's like Disney, Apple, IBM, all of them. So we really need to think about getting out, connecting and taking mass action. Those are the two big ones for me. Ted oh, this is 10 exit. Okay, so for those <laughs> out there, let's do this right now. Um, do you have written goals? Okay, for those watching, just say yes or no, no loud. Do you have written goals? I'll tell you a study that I read out of uh, the M MBA students out of Harvard. It was incredible. Um, about 83% of people had no goals. Okay, about, I think it was 13% or let's say around 10% that had goals but had not written them down. And the very small percentage, like 1% to 3%, I think it was, that had goals and had written them down. Um, and then they observed them 10 years later and had these, um, had this conversation. And the, I think it was 1%, the 1% of people that had goals and had written them down were making 10 years later, on average, 10 times, 10x as much as all the other combined. So think about the power of writing down your goals, being clear on your goals. And then, as Megan says, 10x your goals. So question one, do you have your goals? Are they written down? If not, get to it. Number two, how do you 10x those goals? And I loved what you said with proximity is power. You need to actually, you know, look at the people out there and try and model the masters. Uh, what are some of the trends that you would see now? Obviously, health and fitness is absolutely key. Isn't it crazy? We talk about, you know, a virus that's uh, and several strains and all these things that are happening and no one particularly not in social media uh, social media and mainstream media, no one is talking about nutrition, no one is talking about movement, no one is talking about mindfulness, no one is talking about how to protect and, and boost your immune system, no one, okay? And then we have people like you out there that are actually sharing the word of what's needed. My question to you is, what do you think uh, could be a trend or two or ideas for people to really keep an eye on now with, with what's happening in the world? Yeah, I mean, one that you are avidly getting into right now is, and I just spoke up on this uh, a few days ago, is technology in the fitness industry, whichever industry that you're in, technology is the way of the future. Um, I mean, NFTs are something that are really interesting. I'm an app developer. So Buzzville was a health and fitness app I created seven years ago at the brink of when apps were really up and coming. And right now we're seeing NFTs really start to grow. And I like to use this comparison because there are a ton of apps that were created seven years ago that you do not know the name of. There's, you know, 98% um, didn't really make it. And I believe NFTs will be the same. So it's, it's really about looking at these different technology spaces, but remembering what's happened in the past. It, you can't just create an NFT and then go, well, why didn't it work? Megan said it would. Well, I said, you've got a 2% of that actually taking off and you need to think outside mm -hmm. of the box, just as we did seven years ago of how you can do something different in your industry what isn't connected i mean buzzville was connecting all of the health and fitness studios as well as uh, meditation centers just wellness all together not just fitness classes um and on one platform so how do we look at changing the way that we're connected uh in the technology space in whatever uh, industry you're in and i think you'll probably find there's areas of blue ocean there 
So no one's playing in Ooh. the I love that. So find the loophole of what's missing and think outside of the box. Think about what it is that people will be needing. I think we're in for a very interesting um, time ahead with health in general. So it's kind of like, let's not yet let our shoulds. I always say we should, should, should all over ourselves. Let's not let our shoulds become a must. What do we need to do now to one, take charge on our health and two, think about what people will be needing moving forward. There's a lot of things changing in the world and what an incredibly exciting time to be alive. Okay, I have one very powerful question for you. And this okay, is one of, one of my favorite questions to ask, <laughs> right? And I want you just to imagine for a moment now that you are on the world stage. You're on a stage and there is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, and they're all there watching and listening to what you are about to share. And on this world stage, you'll now have an opportunity to share a message to the world, whatever it is for you, whatever comes through. What would be your message to the world? that together we're going to build a, a healthier environment and a healthier um, population of amazing people uh, utilizing all of the great technologies and um, the resources that we already currently have and that this is the way of the future looking at our health and well-being personally and the health of the planet and I'm so grateful to be standing and sharing this with you. And it's my mission. Oh, I love the clarity in that. I love the clarity in that, how clear that was. Oh, uh, that's absolutely amazing. Okay, people go through, um, let's call it challenges. Yes, health challenges, uh, mental challenges, uh, financial challenges, uh, entrepreneur challenges, like, I, I always say the difference between a, a person that is not successful and a person that is successful is only one thing. The person that is successful didn't give up. That's the thing. Because if you look at it, if you don't give up and you keep on going, you're going to eventually be, you know, master your craft. Uh, what has been the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome uh, in terms of um, being a business owner? Yeah, thank you. Great question. Um, it's interesting because I feel like, and I was mentioning this to you earlier, and I know a lot of uh, your viewers know Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. I feel like I've been consistently doing a loop throughout my entrepreneurial journey, um, getting a new call to adventure, a new challenge, a new set of demons, and uh, the cycle continues and I continue to grow. And similar to what you've shown me in the past, it's just getting faster and faster and going up um, you know, quicker in the mm. direction that I've been emulating for a long time. So my, my biggest challenge, I think, came early on, which was amazing. And that was having to uh, buy out another director of my company after three years of battling back and forth in a, um, in, in Buzzville, in a, a large, uh, not a lot of large entrepreneurial venture, but also having a lot of stakeholders, board members, and uh, probably the biggest gutsy move that I've ever done and took control of the company from there. But all of that wasn't easy and there were so many bumps in the road um, and the, you know, the constant board debates, arguments, and then actually taking that first really big step. Um, uh, that was by far the most difficult thing I've had to uh, tackle. But I can say with like from there, I think at the time we had about 100 users on my fitness app and I went and presented to Uber within, I think, 30 days of this happening and ended up partnering with Uber at a very de early development stage. So it kind of set me into a major take action, awesome phase. And I heard an interview you were having the other day with regards to, you know, action and ma masculine energy and the feminine energy of being in a calm zone and um, really uh, enjoying all of the moments and not taking those first leaps. And I feel like throughout that entire journey, it was having to take ma mass action and then having to step into your my feminine leadership role, having to take mm. mass action. So it's been like this beautiful dance and I'm so grateful for my feminine energy when it comes to the entrepreneurial journey in the fitness industry. It's definitely worked as a great asset and 
that it helped me overcome some uh, really big barriers initially on. Oh, beautiful. Think about this, guys. The masculine and the feminine, the doing and the non-doing, the mind, the heart, the coherence between the two. And so what we tend to do is we're either too much in the masculine, too much pushing, too much drive, go, go, stop, stop, work, work, uh, or go, go, don't stop, work, work, you know, keep on going, keep on pushing, or too feminine, too passive, too, too submissive. Now, not that the feminine is passive or submissive, but in the entrepreneurial sense, being too relaxed and sitting back and waiting and not taking action is obviously going to be a challenge. So I love that you've spoken to the the balance here. I think this is absolutely key. Uh, what's an inspiration for you? Uh, what do you look to for inspiration, for motivation, for transformation in your own life to, to stay on your journey as an entrepreneur uh, and as a thought leader in your field? Yeah, brilliant. Um, the amazing minds that I have around me. So they keep me going. And um, my number one inspiration is family. It comes back to really uh, one of my highest values. And I'm always so inspired and gr so grateful and inspired by my parents. My dad was a professional athlete. My mom a psychologist. And they've really led me to believe in myself at the highest level that I can make a global change. So um, that they've really kept me motivated. Um, but with regards to take action, some really easy ones. And I know that that's why you know, some of you guys might be tuning in today of what we use with our take action and uh, motivational techniques right now. And this is, this is what we found over the last 500 clients, I would say that we just inducted over in Sydney have really started to assist. It's little changes and you you touched on this earlier it's little tricks of the mind to get that first step and some of them i think uh, we've used in the past and you know going on uh books like tools of titans by tim ferris this has amazing uh different tips on uh how to change your routine how to get going in the morning um you know sleeping in the bed feels warm all of those things um, we use uh, the five second rule by Mel Robbins, which literally you count down five, four, three, two, one in your head. That's switching you from that safe mode into the, okay, I'm in my uh, parasympathetic. I can push myself out of bed. It can help you get over depression, um, get you actually up in the morning. So just using little tricks like Mel Robbins, five seconds rule, push yourself up after that five seconds, you're done counting down because your brain's not no longer going to say I need to stay safe and warm in here and I don't want to go to the gym. It's intimidating. Um, or tricks like going back to why you're actually doing it. You know, grab that little part of your stomach that you feel is uncomfortable that you keep saying I have to go to the gym and that will actually help you get out of the bed as well. So I mean, I use tricks like that on myself. The overall scheme is what um, keeps me motivated are, are my family and the people around me, but the the hacks are key. And I think that we can use them right now after two years of being set, being sedentary. Oh, I love that. The hacks are key. And again, you know, I always say the greater the why, the higher we fly. You know, the stronger the emotional reason, the spiritual reason, the why, the you know, the easier it is to do all the how. When, when the why is big enough, the how takes care of itself. So you've got motivation, inspiration from your family, from the amazing people and the minds around you, and from the people in your closest circle. What if, and this is for the viewers out there, what if we could peg our goals, our health goals, um, to that of the people around us, such as to inspire our children that daddy can lose weight, that mommy can go for a walk, that we can be healthy and not just healthy, but to thrive. What if we could peg that to there? I think this could be a great idea. And once we start to get some movement, what if we could take it to the next level? I, mean, I am like you. I've got these. Uh, I talk about the eight areas of life. And my question is, how can I obtain peak performance in all these eight areas of life? So I go get the best mentors in all the different areas of life. And I literally look at the hacks. Like I've already written down the name of the books that you've talked about. Because I'm like, Tim Ferriss, it's on. Grant Cardone, yeah. it's on. I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be studying. I'm so excited to absorb that content. Yeah, ditto. And that's what motivates me too. So um, I think the ability to want to keep learning is very important. And as an entrepreneur, we really get caught into the doing. 
And we forget that the reason we became an entrepreneur is to be able to continue learning, expand our horizons. We don't want to be put in a box and um, be living out somebody else's goals. We want to be doing our own. And how do we keep our goals are constantly adapting and everyone's written them down today. So perfect. Um, in Grant Cardone's book, he, he writes his goals down at the end of every day to remind him why he's getting up in the mor next morning, to remind him, have they, did he accomplish one and what is the next step now? And to keep moving uh, on our journey, because that's what gives us a healthy mind, which it also makes us want to stay healthier for our family and ourselves. So I think it's so important to have those, that ability to continue learning and developing as well, especially as an entrepreneur. Oh, I love it. And, you know, one thing I just want to speak to, which I heard uh, many, many years ago, um, which is really important, you know, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. You know, it's not for every single person. Sometimes being an entrepreneur is being the best mom, the best dad in the world, right? And that's enough. That is success, right? You don't have to think that you have to go out and save the world. That's not how this works. It's real simple. Just do what you love and love what you do. And if you're in, you know, doing what you're loving and you're in service of other people, you're actually success. You're a success. Like it, it, It's really important to not to project other people's values onto us and so there are those who are supporters and uh, who are architects and builders and there are those who are thought leaders and those who drive uh, innovation and it's really important to kind of feel into to that because both people uh, types of people are really 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 important and and also really needed megan um just over to you um with what's happening in the world um with getting moving again uh, what would be some advice for those people who have heard this um, they feel inspired now and they're ready to start moving in their lives. It, it could be physical movement. It could be entre entrepreneurial movement. What would you say is a key cornerstone uh, for them to consider and to get started? Uh, well, number one, we've touched on it. It's write it down. So write down what your, what your goal is and why you want to actually get started. Once you have your goal, then you should look at just blocking out the time factor. So setting a time of when you're going to actually do it. Without those two steps, it's quite difficult. So we right away give our clients a goal setting sheet and a, a, a schedule so that they know, okay, I'm committing to this. So I, I've done that, I've committed, and now I've committed maybe 10 minutes a day to either uh, meditating or, or my fitness. And one of the big misconceptions is that we need to go really far in to get started. We progress slowly is key. If we go uh, to the gym eight, five times a week, a lot of the time we hit burnout and 80% of the time we're actually going to drop off in the first month. So it yep. needs to be a slow, progressive rollout of when we start to get moving and start to actually take that first step in. We do with clients um, one minute workouts, which actually at a very high intensity have been scientifically proven to be as good as a 20 minute cardio session. So eliminate time out of the factor. Um, look up one minute workouts. They're fantastic. Um, we also look at just the basics of how about we do one push up. So it just starts with one push up in the morning. I, I don't want you to do 10. I want you to do just one or let's do, I, I don't, I don't want to do push ups. I won't even do desk stretches. How about one mindful breath a day? So just mm. a, a nice, simple box breathing exercise, four seconds up, hold out, hold. Good job. You've done one mindful breath a day. And then what we see is a real great domino effect of wanting a bit more. And then you find actually 10 pushups is easy. Uh, I'm at 50 now and it, it starts to be a domino effect. So I think that just starting slowly and progressing is the next real big step. This is so key because now there can be no excuse such as I don't have time right? It just cannot be every person can do 60 seconds, right? And this is key. I remember I was a personal trainer, right? 12 years. And when I first started, I was like, okay, we're going to get you fit. Uh, you know, what do you want to achieve? I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay. Well, how many times a week do you want to train? And the clients, the ones that are inexperienced will say, oh, five times a week, right? 100%. And when I was inexperienced, I'd say, oh yeah, great goal. We're going to smash it. And then two weeks later, uh, they ain't coming to the gym. Right, they're they're burned out. They're exhausted. They're so sore they can barely get out of bed. 
And so what I changed, I, I swapped it. So now, because then the energy, consider this, now the energy was, I'm calling them saying, hey, well, how are you going? Are you coming back? And so I'm now, I call it, I call it throwing life rafts to get them to take care of their health. Mm, no, not, not how it's going to work. So I changed it the other way around. So I say, okay, well, you know, James, um, you know, you want to get fit? Yeah, I want to get fit. Okay, well, um, how many times a week do you want to exercise? Oh, five times a week I want to exercise. Okay, great. How many times have you been exercising per week over the last month? Uh, zero. Okay, well, then we're going to start with one for the first week. And then we're going to do two the next week. And we're going to keep on doing two a week until you are ready to go to three. And then James would be, no, but I want to get fit. And I'd say, well, the only benchmark that I'd like us to consider here for you to get fit and to stay fit is if you continue to exercise. It's pointless drinking water unless you're going to continue to drink water because if you drink it once, you're never going to stay alive. It's pointless exercising. It's pointless eating clean unless you are going to continue to do so. That's when you get results. And so now the energy wasn't, hey, James, are you coming to the gym? What's happening? The energy was, James, can I please come to the gym an extra time this week? And now we have inspiration and motivation. So I love yeah. what you're talking about here. Take it away. Make it simple. Start with one minute a day. For those listening, I want to just, just check in. Who's committed to this? To starting their journey and or if you're on the journey, to take that journey up just one minute level i'm absolutely so pumped about this and um, megan any final words to take it away what do you want to share before we wrap up yeah i would love to give uh your viewers a prize today if they can guess this question so if they get it right whoever gets it first right they'll get i'll send it out to them it's an mj stretch band and it has to do with hydration and hydration is also one of the easiest ways for everybody viewing this to get started being properly hydrated actually can help you lose weight. It helps you have more energy. Our brain is 80% water. It helps you think and uh, really be a lot more present throughout the day. So if you can guess how many cups, how many glasses a day does the average person lose? How many glasses a day of water does the average person lose in a day? So whoever writes that down, in the comment okay, in the chat section let's go how many chat session how many glasses a day does the average person lose lose by just living normal life yeah just living okay valerie, so valerie eight, is saying eight, eight maria 12. saying 12. close everybody's very close okay and go again you get the right answer you guys are close um, so the basics of getting started on, on proper hydration, we should be having at least two liters of water a day, set a reminder on your phone that reminds you it goes off and it actually 10 Valerie, you, yes, Valerie, congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> so 10 cups of water a day. Um, so it means that water is extremely important. We start our clients on just hydrating better. So if you're thinking, Taking that first step is hard. It's literally just doing hydrating more, um, setting a reminder on your phone, putting a sticky note on your computer, or just having like you and I have, having a water bottle accessible is so, so key. So start small and it'll grow from there. Yes. <laughs> and I've seen your office from home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Always has sticky notes on it. So I know what, so, so exactly perfect. right. Um, Might as well, right? It feeds the unconscious with subliminal powerful messages. So why not? Always. I'm absolutely all for it. Hey, Megan, I want to give our viewers uh, one little uh, extra bit of value. And also just to do the right thing here, um, what, um, where, what's the best channel? Where's the best place to get in touch with you? Um, obviously, Valerie's won her prize and people have questions. Okay, we get it. Start simple. I can do that. I want to learn from Megan. I'm inspired. Where did they get in touch with you? Yeah, fantastic. Megan Jarvis on LinkedIn is easy. So I think my name might be at the bottom. Um, but also LinkedIn is um, Facebook and Instagram. Megan W. Jarvis and WellCorp is the company. So you can also go on our site. And yeah, we really look at honing in on corporate wellness, but are happy to show you guys the all encompassing approach of how to get motivated simply, easily and ensure you progress slowly throughout your health and wellness journey. Now's the time. Take some action. I love that. And honestly, if you're a business owner, um, 
my question to you is, have you got the appropriate health and wellness systems in place for your staff to reduce absentees and presentees and to really get productive, happy staff? Like in one of our companies, we've got 18 staff. And all the time we talk about, you know, when is the detox? We detox together before the events. We're eating clean. We always take care of each other and support each other. And what we see is not just the rise of this wellness, this incredible um productivity and energy that we see but the community we thrive and because we're well we love uh, being at work and so for us it's not coming to work and then ticking the box and going home it's actually being part of a mission that'll improve uh, our lives and inspire us and and obviously make us healthy healthier as we age as well absolutely oh, love it critical and i mean google um apple all of the the bigger companies are are taking this to the next level because it is the way of the future um at, at apple they actually set an alarm every hour to have the staff get up out of their seats and walk around because they know how important not being sedentary all day is to blood circulation our uh, blood pressure all of the different ailments osteoarthritis that we get so um so important as business owners but even as uh if you are working from home or working with somebody else it, just look after yourself utilizing these simple tips today done let's do it and before we close let's do this okay you and i were behind the scenes ninja warrior we had a good time we'll do one two three show me your favorite ninja move okay, okay. one two three go <laughs> <laughs> we do <laughs> similar how funny if, if you're Perfect. outside, you would do the full splits and I would do a one arm handstand. I already know our moves because we had sometimes you have to do them in the end of the audition. So yep. I know what you'd be up to. And then just walking on your hands, maybe a backflip. Sorry, we guys. had a good time. That was so much fun. <laughs> I'm so honored that you came on. I love you so much. And I'm so grateful to be your friend. Thank and, you. and, and thank you for taking the time to share this incredible wisdom with our viewers today. Love and blessings. Check out Megan Jarvis if you guys have any questions. And uh, thank you so much once again. Thanks, Espen. Love you. And thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. You guys are in the one percentile of really taking that first step. So great job. Um, and thanks for listening. Let's get moving again. Thanks so much.